What's going on, guys? It's Derek Smith over here for your pod Reddit podcast on November 18th, 2019. It's currently 7 o'clock at night. I am being lazy as hell today, but I'm here doing it like I said I would. <laughs> uh, quick shout out always to sponsors um, Country Crush, Nat Fit, and to Lion Straps. Uh, you guys get your straps, your supplements, and your handles at those places. Uh, Country Crush also, I have a discount code, uh, which is DREC, D-W-R-E-K-10. DREC10 gets you uh, get you a discount there. Enter that, and you guys get yourself some handles. Um, handles are great, guys. Handles are those, these specific arm wrestling handles are a great way to really isolate uh, arm wrestling muscles that we use. So, um, I'm not... You don't. You can be a great arm wrestler without insane arm wrestling handles, for sure. But do they help? Do they help isolate and really work on muscles that you want to target? Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, don't get it twisted. You know, I mean, the, uh, Ray Cote, love the dude, great friend of mine, and I love his products. I really do. But I mean, I, I can also acknowledge the fact that you can do amazing things without any handles. Um, but that's not also not take away any of the other awesome handles that other companies make. There's great stuff out there, guys. So definitely look around. Uh, just Country Crush has always helped me out, and their handles stand the test of time. You make make you make those handles too well, Ray. <laughs> you make them too well. They're gonna stand around forever. After the Great Apocalypse, the handles will still be around. <laughs> uh, so this past week, what happened? Uh, what, what did we do here? Um, I forget. I forget what I was doing this week for arm wrestling. Um, we had the tournament um, last weekend. I did the Monday pod, last Monday podcast, talked about the tournament. And the rest of this week was um, was just uh, healing up and a little bit of gym work. Um, I, am, I got inspired recently by um, Ryan Bowen and Lachlan Adair and some other people I've heard of. And um, online coaching, right? I figured... You know, um, having someone help oversee my training, um, arm wrestling is like the most important thing in the world to me. After my daughter, arm wrestling is number one. And so it's such an important thing to me that receiving some online coaching or some help from someone I respect um, isn't a bad idea. I mean, and I'm already investing so much time and stuff into the sport that I wouldn't, I mean, paying a little bit of money to have someone help me train and help oversee my training is nothing, right? I mean, I'm already spending enough money on bullshit. So what's, you know, throwing an extra little bit of money a month to somebody to help uh, make sure I'm on point that that doesn't, you know, that can't hurt anything. So um, I really spent a lot of time thinking about it and about who I would trust enough to oversee um, the most important thing in the world to me, you know, that I'm competing in. Um, And I racked my brain for a while. And, you know, I think uh, Ryan Bowen's getting online coaching from um, Todd Hutchings. And then Lachlan Adair is getting it from Giannis Amalins. And I know there's more people out there getting coaching from people. And uh, I, d- I haven't talked to um, my coach, the person I found. I haven't talked to him yet about if he wants me to make it public. But I found someone. And it's someone I, I fully respect. And I would let them take the reins on any aspect, really, of my arm wrestling career if they wanted to. Um, but mostly they're going to be helping me oversee... Um, my actual training and strength gains, right? So, super excited about that. Uh, working out some of the details and trying to get that going um, slowly but surely. So, excited to see what pans out from that. It's a big update for my personal arm wrestling career. Um, yeah, I'm just really excited about that, guys. Uh, um, you know, some of these these amazing arm wrestlers and the really known guys. You know, like there's not a lot of money in arm wrestling, but if that's one way where they can uh, still make some money off the sport and off their talents and the hard work they've put in is that um, some really sport-specific training that they can provide. So um, definitely recommend if there are any of those top guys listening here to provide some uh, online coaching for sure. Um, if you guys are getting online coaching from people who don't know what the hell they're doing, um, don't. Don't do that. <laughs> um, so I've been doing that, and then we had practice on Sunday. Um it was a small practice because John Berzink was in town on um, Saturday. John Berzink came down to San Diego and had a big practice. Um, so a bunch of people went down there. Some some of my team went there, but I wasn't able to because I had to work. And uh, 
Now, um, oh, so I had a Sunday practice because I wasn't able to go down to the Saturday practice, but Sunday practice actually turned into a good-sized practice. There was, um, what, 13 pullers there, I think? Uh, so it was good. It was good. I definitely got a good workout and pretty sore. And, uh, yeah, so the rest of this, today was rehab work and eating and hydrating and stuff like that and uh, taking care of myself, trying to heal up so I can get some good productive gym days uh, the rest of this week. Uh, and shout out to some of my new arm wrestlers showing up. A guy named Kane showed up, really applying himself. Um, excited to see he's a 155 pounder. Um, but really excited about the sport. And then I got um, I got the crew. The crew still showing up consistently. Uh, shout out to ETN Weight. Um, shout out to Tyler Austin showed up. Good to see you, Tyler. Carlos, uh, Carlo de Guzman. Um, I don't know everybody. I mean, I could list my whole team, but that would take forever. You know what I feel about you guys. Love you guys. Anyway, okay. So what you guys came here to listen to is me go over the Reddit topics and just uh, let's talk about some stuff, huh? All right. So since the last time I posted the uh, podcast, <clears throat> right after that, posted by Random Dust Bunny, um, titled Hand Control. It's a picture of mirror hand syndrome, which is um, a picture <laughs> of basically what, uh, somebody who has an arm, or like on their arm they have um, eight fingers. I don't know. I, I think that this is... I think this is a Photoshop. I could be wrong. I haven't looked into it, but it looks crazy. It looks like wild. <laughs> I can't imagine trying to arm wrestle somebody like that. Um, so yeah, I don't. <laughs> I think I think it's fake, but I'm sure someone can share um, share a picture of it or do a little research and let me know <laughs> if it's real. It, yeah, it's basically. It kind of looks like. And if this is real, I'm not trying to make fun of someone with a disability. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if this is real or not, but the hand kind of looks like the alien off of Aliens, uh, the one that latches onto your face, you know what I'm saying, that jumps out of the egg and lands on your face. It kind of looks like that, which is kind of wild. I think these are Photoshop pictures. Cause I've never heard of this or seen this in my life. But then again, you know, who knows? Um, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much. But, yeah, if they arm wrestle, they would be crazy hand control because they could uh, wrap their, fi- their eight fingers all around your hand and, and own your hand, I guess. So, uh, moving forward, uh, oh, okay, so there's like three posts posted by uh, MAGA Arms, four posts, four posts in a row posted by MAGA Arms. The first three are titled Bringing Home the Medals, uh, one for Chad Weston, one for Joseph Christofferson, and one for himself, um, the guy that runs MAGA Arms, I can never remember his name, um, so their tournament videos are the same tournament, just uh, clips of each person's uh, matches. So if you guys want to go check those out, do that. I watched uh, one of them. I did not watch the, I did not watch Chad's or Joseph's. I watched the, um, the original first one. So um, MAGA Arm stands for Make Arm Wrestling Great Again, um, in case anybody's wondering. But yeah, check, I mean, his channel, the editing is good. I mean, um, the, the film quality is, is great. So, I mean, there's no reason. This is, it's just a solid YouTube channel uh, coming up for arm wrestling. And I love watching any kind of arm wrestling I can, you know. Um, so definitely check it out. Dude, I got nothing against the MAGA Arms um, videos at all. I think they're awesome. So check those out. Um, after those three videos, um, the, the fourth video he posted was um, titled Arm Wrestling Training Alone. And it's a, like, five-minute video or six-minute video or something like that of him train I need to know his name damn it I don't like saying him uh of him training alone on an arm wrestling table at a gym basically he took a table to the gym and he puts um he uses different arm wrestling handles on a pulley system and is uh doing basically um our table curls and rotation work on his hands and wrists uh at the gym so <clears throat> first off congratulations on finding a gym that will allow you to take your arm wrestling table over there man that's always you know uh, an obstacle, a hurdle. Um, like a lot of some of those gyms won't. I'm actually coming to those crossroads right now with this current new coach. Um, with a lot of stuff that I'm gonna be doing is gonna require a table, and I have a half table at my house, but um, I lifted a gym, um, so I'm gonna have to talk to the gym owner, see if he'll allow me to take my half table over there, leave it there, maybe in a closet. So, um, yeah, making that happen. 
can help a lot. I know you're going to look really weird at a normal gym doing that, but, you know, who cares? Man, we're here for arm wrestling. I'm not here to look cool at a, at a standard gym. That's If I was trying to look cool, I would not have gotten to arm wrestling. <laughs> I would have gotten to the NBA or something. So, um, but yeah, the lifts he's doing uh, on the table are great lifts, man. Uh, pronation work, high wrist work, uh, cupping uh, with his wrist wrench type of handle. Um, it's all great stuff. And uh, the, the, a lot of that stuff is the things that will make you strong for arm wrestling, guys. So, take notes on uh, a lot of the angles and stuff he's working. It's, it's definitely good stuff. Uh, moving forward, posted by Random Dust Bunny. Ooh, hopefully I don't mess this name up. Alizhan Muratov. Lightning Fast World Arm Wrestling Champion. It's a video of Alisson Muratov, um, him pulling at the World Championships. He's a Kazakhstan puller. I swear, Kazakhstan has the fastest arm wrestlers uh, in the world. Uh, yep, I, that's my opinion, and I'm going to stick to that. Because there might be a random person here or there that's really fast, but consistently, dude, Kazakhstan cranks out lightning fast arm wrestlers. It's it's wild. Um so yeah, watch that this video of him just like basically just cupping and using back pressure, dragging his elbow back and just flashing people all the way up to the, the finals. Like it's the dude's crazy, uh, left-handed. It's crazy fast. So, but there's also other Kazakhstan arm wrestlers that are amazing, right? So that's definitely Kazakhstan cranks out some amazing arm wrestlers. Um, but yeah, watching this video is, is wild. How fast he, he flashes people. It's like they don't even they don't get a chance to really get into the match. So. Who knows, man, if they got into it, maybe they have something for him, but it doesn't look that way. Um, moving forward, posted by Ryan Blue Bowen, titled, Simply the Hardest One Rep Max Session I've Ever Done. I did not think I was going to get this one. Had to go to a place I've never been before, but have now achieved 20 run rep max records in a row. Um, con- congrats, Ryan. Good job, man. I don't know, it's just like, first and foremost, let me state this. Ryan's my boy. Ryan came out here. We have gone to breweries together and hung out and drank and spent time of, of talking to him for, for years, right? Ryan is my friend, 100%. Love the dude. Now, his channel, the uh, the Pound for Pound channel, I feel like it's really taken a weird turn where like the whole channel is 100% about, lately, about Ryan Bowen and like, or at least all the stuff I'm seeing. Everything gets shared, Ryan. I don't know if you listen to my podcast at all, but everything that gets shared, man, is just like your your journey and your maxes and your lifts. And I, I thought originally you were gonna do like a little side thing of training where you were gonna have like a little playlist of some of your training stuff, but mainly you're still gonna be focusing on uh, tournaments and um, you know promoting your promoting the pound for pound uh, events and you know tournament videos and teaching people stuff like that, helping the new guys learn stuff like that. And, um, but it seems like a lot of it's just kind of centered on you and your trip to Zlotty and you and Lachlan, which I like you guys. They're, you're awesome dudes. It's just, I don't know. It's just for such a big channel, you got, you could really do a, and you were for the longest time, a lot of, a lot of help, uh, to all the new guys. So yeah, I don't know. I, I just lose some interest in just watching you work out and stuff. I mean, I'm happy for you. Congratulations, man. It's just, yeah, as a viewer, I'm just like, oh, Ryan, another video of Ryan working out. I don't know. You know? You know what I'm saying? Ryan? <laughs> um, keep doing what you're doing, man. I mean, anything you do is good for arm wrestling, you know, and getting anything out there is good for the sport, and I know that you've been making big strength gains, and you're applying yourself super heavily onto um, trying to become one of the best in the world. I get it. I totally get that, dude. That's what I'm doing as well. It's just, uh, I always thought pound for pound was going to be like a big arm wrestling YouTube channel and uh, everything's going to be focused on growing the sport uh, not just focusing on Ryan's one rep maxes anyway moving forward um, posted by uh, dog ape man maybe Do- dog man I don't know how to pronounce that uh, beginner here with a question about pulling strength and training um, I just had my first training session with my club, and obviously I'm sore, which is no big deal. But I want to continue to get stronger in between sessions without injuring myself. Um, how long should I be pulling? How long should I be pulling, and how hard should I be pulling at practice so that I don't destroy myself for a whole week afterwards? Um, okay, so if you're a beginner, and you're going to be making substantial strength gains on the table 
at each table session, right? So when you first start arm wrestling right now, you just started, you're going to be sore. You'll be making substantial uh, muscle gains as well. So to to try to minimize or even worry about dialing back your table time in an effort to um, to like emphasize your, your gym and lifting sessions when you first start seems kind of weird to me. Once your muscles and everything from arm wrestling so often, your muscles, tendons, and all that stuff get weathered where you're not making substantial gains um, on the table, then looking into focusing on the gym becomes a higher priority. But like, dude, if you're brand new, man, like the table time is going to do its its job. It'll make you stronger. You need to focus on basically, I, like I always tell new guys, get as much table time as you possibly can. Every all your time in between your table sessions while you're new should be focused on rehabbing and getting back on the table ASAP. Like if you, you know, if you have un, like ac- access to unlimited table time, then you should be on the table as soon as you possibly can. Right. And, and that's it. That's high priority. Learning how to not break your arm, learning how to arm wrestle the techniques and starting to weather, um, getting your tendons weathered, getting your joints beat up and all that stuff. So they can, can so eventually your arm turns into an arm wrestling arm as far as like all your connective tissue is concerned that's super high priority man so like i don't know i mean like to tell you it just goes against like what i believe as far as telling you to dial back so you could go lift to the gym as a new puller which is weird um i don't know if if you're that new then any pulling is going to take away from your table from your gym time because any kind of arm wrestling is really going to beat up your new bones and your new arm, your new joints and all that stuff, right? So, I don't know, man. Like, no table time. <laughs> if you want to focus on the gym, then go focus on the gym and don't arm wrestle. But, yeah, I mean, as far as, like, if you're brand new, like, don't even worry about it, man. The only gym you should be worrying about is doing rehab work in the gym. Like, that's the only thing I would say. And so, like, I have a guy on my team right now, um, ETN, who's arm wrestling twice a week. He's arm wrestling Thursday nights, and he's arm wrestling uh, Sundays with us. And then the rest of his days, um, he's starting to be able to lift a little more and more as time goes on. But the rest of his time is spent um, rehabbing and making sure he can get back on the table and everything's good and moving. And he's making huge gains. He's been, like, doing, you know, beating a bunch of people he couldn't beat at the beginning, going to tournaments, and placing well. Like, ETN is, is killing the game. He's doing it perfectly. So... That's always going to be my recommendation, man, is uh, focusing on table time way over going to the gym. Um, so, yeah, I mean, don't injure yourself, but, um, yeah, I, I can't even give you a time or how much, because it all depends on how hard you're pulling at the, uh, on the practice and stuff and how much you're tearing yourself down. So, yeah. All right, so moving forward, posted by um, BriPi1, first time arm wrestling pain. Uh, so I've never seriously arm wrestled before, and two weeks ago I arm wrestled in an event at my college. It wasn't very serious, no professional table or anyone who actually arm wrestled, and we sat in chairs instead of standing. I felt fine on my right arm, but my left upper forearm near your wrist stung for about three to five seconds as soon as we started, but went away. It wasn't bad enough for me to stop, but I definitely felt it at first. The next day I went to work out and had pain in my left and right um, elbows and forearms, of course. It felt like uh, growing pains in your shins, but in my forearms. My left hurt uh, worse than my right. It starts hurting when I do any sort of elbow bending. So pushing, pulling, arm day, and, and even squats. I don't feel pain at all until about the third set of my main lift, and then it gets worse during rest periods. I don't notice any pain outside of working out uh, and the hour after that. What is uh, this from, and what is the best way to help recover it? Is it bone, tendon, muscle trauma? Should I ice, heat, exercise, rest, or stretch my arm? I don't plan on arm wrestling in the future. It was just uh, it was just for fun. Thank you. Um, this was posted five days ago. So, uh, assuming that you took it easy, man. Basically what happened is, you arm wrestled. You've never really arm wrestled. You're, um, you probably strained a bunch of different ligaments and tendons and stuff uh, in your elbow and in your wrist. So that's why that's hurting. Um your arms aren't identical as far as all the muscles inside of them. You know, one arm's generally stronger than the other one. So your other one probably just got strained more, which is why one's hurting more than the other one. Um, but you also lit up all your um, your nerves. So your nerves are inflamed. Uh, definitely probably your ulnar nerve goes from your bottom two fingers through your elbow and up to your shoulder. Um, your nerves are inflamed, man. So you doing lifts while they're still inflamed is just going to light up your hand. That's why it starts hurting when you uh, the more you activate it and the more you use your elbows. So, um, 
you want it anti-inflammatory, something to, you know, make it not so inflamed your nerves. I, once again, I'm not a doctor, so let me state that. <laughs> but from experience, uh, when this type of stuff happens, man, you just want a little bit of ibuprofen, ice, and time. Time just to let your nerves die down and relax a little bit. Don't keep pushing yourself in the gym. When you arm wrestle, you have to understand that if, if you do some serious arm wrestling, especially if you're new, it's going to take away from the gym for a little bit. It's just your nerves are going to be way too inflamed. Until you get to a point where you're so strong at arm wrestling that your nerves don't get inflamed because it's not difficult and your body's built around for it. So people wonder stuff like, how can Devin arm wrestle so much? Well, Devin can arm wrestle four days in a row uh, because he's so strong and he's been arm wrestling so long that his bo- his bones and everything are built um, to handle it now. So it's not even enough trauma to his bones to really get his everything inflamed. It's just average for him, right? So that's why he's able to arm wrestle so long because he's at such a high level. His arms and elbows and everything are at such a high level that arm wrestling against a bunch of random noobs <laughs> at, a, at a practice doesn't get his arms super inflamed right? So he can just handle it. Plus he knows, you know, which directions to pull to make, to maintain, um, arm health, I guess you'd, you'd call it. Um, all right, moving forward, uh, posted by Rodental, Mississippi State Arm Wrestling Championship 2019, right-handed. Um, I think we already had this posted on the Reddit page, but whatever. Yeah, it's just when, uh, that's that tournament in Mississippi that I went to. It was an awesome tournament. And uh, on the cover, you see Ron Bath and Matt Mask about to arm wrestle. Uh, Ron Bath was a monster that day, you know, especially. He's always a monster, but that day he was strong as hell. And uh, he beat Matt and a lot of people. But yeah, definitely check that out. That tournament was awesome. Uh, you should be able to see me in there uh, getting my ass whooped. <laughs> Um, yeah, check that out, guys. Check out the Mississippi State Tournament for sure. Uh, moving forward, posted by Rodental again. 2019 Breakout Athletes and 2020 Wanted Athletes Conversation with Neil Pickup. It's an interview with Neil Pickup, Michael Todd, Rob Bidgen Jr., and Devin Larratt. And they're sitting there talking about you know who the up-and-coming people were and who they'd like to see. Um, any kind of interview with some of these personalities is really funny. Rob Bidgen always makes me laugh. Neil Pickup himself is hilarious. If you guys aren't already listening to Neil Pickup's podcast, do. Uh, I think he has it on Apple. Uh, you can find it on Apple, um, the iTunes store or whatever. Um, really good stuff. And Neil's been around forever. He's like, a, I believe, a world champion, and uh, but just super established arm wrestler. He has his own league, Arm Wars, that he ran um, out of England for a long time. I think he's still doing it, and it's super successful over there. It's on TV. Um, Neil is like tops that dude's amazing and so listening to him talk about arm wrestling and listening to him interview other arm wrestlers is amazing because he knows what's going on so neil is kind of overseeing as far as i know as far as i'm understanding it he's overseeing a lot of the wal stuff he's helping choose the athletes who gets picked to go on to wal and just kind of like a lot of the matchups and stuff like that so it's great with a couldn't be in better hands as far as i'm concerned um, nothing but positive things to say about neil pickup so uh, check out his podcast. Check out these little videos with Neil interviewing the guys for WAL. It's all great stuff. Great stuff, guys. Uh, moving forward, video posted by Rodental. Mask, damn, Rodental. Rodental, you're posting a lot, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Rodental posted Mask versus Berzink. This is a super match um, where Matt Mask and John Berzink had a super match. And um, Matt was like... Matt was up and coming, especially right then. He was really breaking onto the scene big time. Um, and and he uh, he had this super match, and I really thought John was going to destroy him. John ended up winning, but it was 3-2. to two. And Matt flashed him one round, and the next round, like even in a slow match in the straps, Matt was able to bust John's hand back and, and ended up pinning him. Um, and the final match that John won, John had his, his wrist was compromised a couple times, and he still pushed through it with kind of like a flop wrist a little bit um, and ended up beating Matt, but... I know Matt definitely um, surprised John. You could see it in John's face. Like John had got real serious after that first, um, the first loss in round two. It was uh, it was wild. So great video, guys. Check it out. Uh, moving forward, posted by HD Bill Doe. Uh, take home the new strongest badge, Gladiator from St. Louis, Missouri, on June thirteenth, twenty twenty. Uh, promoting his tournament, 
Um, you guys check it out. If you guys are around the area, definitely go check out that tournament, June 13th um, in St. Louis, uh, Missouri. Or, is it Missouri? <laughs> <laughs> go check. It's, yeah, I forget all my abbreviations for the states. <laughs> you guys give up. Yeah, go check out that tournament if you guys get a chance. Um, okay, so moving forward, this next video posted by Coca Cola. Um, John Berzink in his prime 2005 versus Bajan Todd uh, Goat. This is a cool video, man. It's like a 35 minute video from uh, Gary Roberts. Now, Gary Roberts, let me tell you guys about this dude first, is that Gary Roberts was a guy from Southern California that got into arm wrestling, and he was a big um, film buff. He liked to record things and edit and make you know films and movies and stuff. And he decided to dedicate himself to arm wrestling, and he had this grand idea to make a website called um, myarmtv.com where he would fly around to tournaments, literally. I think he went to every tournament in the United States. Like, it was crazy. Gary was everywhere. And he uh, would record all the tournaments and he would upload them to his website. And then he would charge you a membership and you would pay and you'd go onto his site and you'd have access to all the videos. And it was amazing. It was actually very much, very much ahead of his time. If he, if Gary actually did that nowadays, I think he might even be successful with it. Um, because I was just thinking about that today. Because like um, the amount that people are into arm wrestling right now and how thirsty they are for content. I mean, we got a lot of people doing that stuff for YouTube and whatnot, but no one's doing it the way Gary was doing it. Gary was everywhere. And he was, um, so if you, I don't, I don't think his, I haven't checked on the site. I don't know if the stuff is still up or if the site's oper, um, operational. Uh, but yeah, I used to help work for Gary on the website. So basically it was awesome. You could have a match. So say there's a tournament uh, in your hometown and Gary was there. He would film the tournament. Then when, when he uploads it onto his website, I would go in there and then uh, you say you fast forward till your match. Well, when you walk on stage, it would say on the side of the screen, like not on the video, but on the side, he had a, um, he had like software where it would say, uh, say I walked up on the table against John Brzezink. It would say Derek Smith and you could click on my name. Uh, it'd say Derek Smith versus John Brzezink, like right-handed. And you could click on my name and it would show all, um, all my wins and losses ever that he recorded because he broke down every single match and every single video and uploaded it to his website. So he had a profile for every single arm wrestler that was active in the videos. So you then you could click on my name and you could look at all my wins and losses over the years, how good I was. There was a ranking system on his website and everything. It was awesome. And so what I did when I was working with Gary is uh, me and Josh Handlin, would, uh, we'd go there and we'd watch all the videos and we knew who all the arm wrestlers were. So we would tag all the arm wrestlers um, in the videos, help Gary so he, everything would be tagged. Um, but dude, it was so far ahead of its time. Then you could, everything could go super slow-mo. So you could watch all your matches and go crazy slow-mo and watch what you did and what you didn't do and really break down all the techniques and stuff like that. Um, yeah, great stuff, man. It really sucks that he was, it wasn't able to sustain and he, and he stopped doing it. Um, big shout out to Gary Roberts. If for some reason you listen to my podcast, man, uh, Gary was awesome, dude. He, he's the one that took me to Las Vegas my first time where I got to meet John Brzezink and, and Michael Todd and all the Todd Hutchings, Travis, like John, um, Gary introduced me to a lot of people. And actually, there's two people that have tattoos of my um, my arm TV on their bodies. <laughs> uh, Jamie Sheldon and John Bergson, um, they both have my arm TV tattoos. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, uh, in regards to this video that they shared here, this was a my arm TV video. But it's awesome, dude. Like back in the day, watching Travis when Travis is uh, at his peak. Base or you know pretty close to his peak right there of uh, strength um seeing him arm wrestle and how strong he was left handed and, and like people give a lot of shit for for a lot of people standing up for Travis as far as arm wrestling especially the new new fans of arm wrestling are like dude Travis isn't shit he doesn't do shit because they never really were around when Travis was on top and they haven't seen him like when he's taking it when he was taking it serious and really doing his best and um but like a lot of us remember Travis like this, like in the video and how dominant he was when he felt like applying himself. But even in this video, you'll see he lays down to everybody and he's joking around because it was a tournament that wasn't for any money. So he was just kind of messing around and wasn't taking it serious. Um, but when he does take it serious, he's crazy strong. And you see a younger Marcio Barbosa in there, um, just dude crazy strong. And you see John get to pull with all of them. It's a great video. If you guys get 30 minutes, watch that video for sure. Uh, brings back a lot of memories from when I first got into the sport. And, um, yeah, it's cool seeing all those guys over there. 
Um, moving forward, posted by Ryan Blue Bowen. I've created a Q&A subreddit. Check it out. Uh, then he posts a link to his own subreddit. It's like, uh, what's it called? Like, ask questions with Ryan Blue Bowen or something like that. I, but I never understood. Like, there's already questions here on the regular Reddit. So why wouldn't Ryan just answer the questions if you're on the Reddit? Why do he make his own subreddit? Whatever. Um, yeah, if you guys want to go ask Ryan questions, then I guess go to his own subreddit. Just, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I guess we'll divide divide up the Reddit a little more. <laughs> um, okay, so moving forward, posted by some guy 87 um, Resistance band on power rack plus bench feasible for practice. Hey, everyone. I haven't found any uh, video suggesting this, so I'd like to ask here. Would it be feasible be a feasible setup to wrap a resistance band around a squat rack and then kneeling onto a bench to benef- to practice arm wrestling movements. I was looking for ways to incorporate arm wrestling practice in my home gym and just came up with this. Here's an image of the setup I was thinking of. And then basically approaching it from the opposite side, it's a, it's a picture of a rubber band tied around a squat rack and then like a bench, like uh, one that's like an adjustable bench that you can sit down on just in front of it. So basically he wants to sit on the ground put his elbow on the the bench that you would sit on and just pull on the rubber band. It's a really basic setup, guys. Uh, And then basically approach it from, he wrote, he writes, and then basically approach it from the opposite side and pull. Not quite sure what angles work the best, but that would be the general idea. Is there any sort of fault in the resistance or whatever that would make this a bad idea? Or would that be a way to have exercises closer to an actual table? Any sort of improvement that can and should be made or additional things to look out for in case it does work? Um, now the setup's fine, man. I mean, it's the more you can replicate an actual arm wrestling match as far as your lifting is the way to go, right? But um, I saw, I like I said, I saw the picture of the band. Yeah, and sitting there putting your elbow on something and having resistance. Okay, that's one step towards an arm wrestling match. Or well, maybe getting um a table where you can stand up and you're not crouched over. Okay, that replicates it even more. Okay, well maybe having the um the resistance within a in a handle that's make trying to pronate your hand okay that makes it a little more like an arm wrestling match right so it's just like yeah that helps anything helps picking up a a, a dumbbell helps right and so yeah the more you get into replicating arm wrestling the more it's going to help you out um is that the optimal setup the picture you posted no is it the worst setup no not at all there's definitely worse setups than that so that stuff can help you man um you're going to be able to do at the setup the way you have it. I would say you can do some side pressure stuff, um, a little bit of posting pressure. Um, but you're going to, yeah, you're going to run into some problems when you start trying to deal with the rotation stuff in your wrist with that setup. Uh, that's more of a way to hit your, you know, your brachialis, bicep, lat, um, and shoulder. So, but yeah, I mean, definitely you can make some gains off that for sure, man. It's not the worst setup. Just make sure you stay conscious of, um, your angles so you don't hurt yourself. Uh, keep your elbows in and stuff like that and don't break your fucking arm. So, uh, moving forward, <laughs> posted by Basement Squatch. Um, Smith vs. Sibai plus practice. Uh, it's a video, and there's a link to a video. $100 bet per arm, November 30th at uh, High Hooker's headquarters. Huge practice starting at 2 p.m. I will post the videos for it after as well. Um, this is a video on Devin's, uh, channel, YouTube channel. Basically, um, there's a guy from Devin's team who's going to have a suit match with another guy and they're going to have it at, um, Devin's house, I believe. Um, so they're inviting people to go watch. So if you guys are in the area, you get a chance. If you were in Ottawa, then go check out the, uh, super match for sure. Um, uh, moving forward. Next one posted by Luca9129 it says Levon Saganashvili. And then it's a picture, or it's a link to his, an Instagram video of Levon basically like flexing and showing off his muscles. And the dude's huge, and he's curling like you know fucking three hundred pounds, and he's a monster. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean he's he's everything we uh, we think he is, you know. And I think he'll be on top for a while. Um, you know, as long as nothing crazy happens, he'll uh, he'll be up there for a while. Levon is no joke, no joke. Uh, moving forward. Posted by Toop Karcher. There he is. Uh, WAL isn't full of fouls. It's just less strict. I feel like people complain about early starts, mini elbow fouls, etc. a bit too much. Now I know there are very big fouls that go uncalled as well, but I feel like WAL ruling style is that which is far more relaxed and prioritizes actions 
or action and tries not to stop the match. Uh, they, they try to let the athletes fight themselves more than the ref. Maybe we should just let that be the way it is. Might be good for the sport since it's far more digestible to less hardcore fans. What do you guys think? Um, well, I mean, you have a good point, man. So if you're just a random spectator watching arm wrestling, to see a referee stopping the match the whole time and not letting them start over little tiny ticky-tack things is kind of boring, um, for sure. And letting them just grip and rip and really fly and stuff is, is awesome. Um, but at the same time, like you kind of have to cater to the competitors as well and uh, not letting them get screwed over. Um, WL rules, like I've talked about this before, you know, they are looser and they do want the matches to like end in pins and to really, you know, let it rip. Um, so it's kind of, there's a little bit of give and take. I mean, I think, I think it's fine the way it is right now. And, th- and this is coming from a guy who was not happy about his WAL <laughs> call during my match. Um, but still, I mean, I think the, re- the ruling is fine. You just have to know, accept WAL for what it is, like, you know, for their style of tournaments. Now, they're not WAF as far as, like, having enforcing the strictest calls, and that's okay. They're on their own thing, which is cool. As a, I just don't want to, like, I would hate to see people getting screwed over because of calls. Um, but as long as, you know, it's, it's, there's ways, there's, okay, so there's a referee named Bill Collins, who I love when Bill Collins refs. He's one of, my, like, one of my favorite refs of all time because Bill has been around so long. He knows when there's an advantage being taken and when cheating is like going on and it's like a big, a big cheat, I guess you'd say. So a lot of times he'll let small stuff go that is insignificant in the name of making the match entertaining and keeping it going. And then if there's a real major foul where I, I did something that will influence the match and help me win, I did some kind of cheat that's really going to make me win, then, then it will get called because I cheated. But if it's some stupid little, like, minuscule foul that doesn't affect the match at all, like, it was just like my elbow popped up, like, a tiny little bit and it didn't really change anything, then it'll, it'll keep running, which is, I think that's the best way. You have to have a referee. It comes down to having experienced referees who know arm wrestling so well and who aren't just, like, um, so hardcore and so excited to be there that they just call every single thing they see, but they actually apply themselves and use their brain, right? And referee... Um, a, a really tight can referee a tight match if they want to, but they don't have to. They can read the match and make sure it's entertaining and that no one's getting really cheated. Like that's what I would love. That's the best referee in my opinion. Uh, someone that can do that. And there's other guys that can do that as well. I just, you know, Bill Collins comes to my mind always uh, because I respect the fact that he can do it that way. Um, moving forward, posted by Lord Gadia. Uh, what happens when strong mofos arm wrestle without technique nor guidance? And they post a video of Nathan Jones arm wrestling Phil Martin and, um, and, uh, what's his name? Yeah. It's basically, it was, they used to have arm wrestling at World's Strongest Man competitions until this dude snapped his arm in half. Um, dude was crazy strong and, um, yeah, there was an arm break and then, um, because, what's his name? I can't think of his name right now. <laughs> uh, cause, Magnus Samuelson, is that who it was? I think it was Magnus Samuelson. Um, yeah, Magnus Samuelson. So, Magnus Samuelson was an actual arm wrestler, uh, and then went strongman and stuff. So, it kind of catered to him. They get on the table, Magnus knows what he's doing. He top rolls uh, Nathan Jones, and Nathan Jones snaps his fucking arm in half. It's a really famous arm break, and it's gross. Um, seen it a million times. Not a big fan of people sharing videos of arm breaks, but, you know you kind of have to know, you know, what an arm break is. Like, you have to kind of see it. And uh, so I don't watch them anymore. I don't need to. I've seen it enough times. So I don't. it's kind of like a NASCAR driver watching car crashes, like, on a NASCAR track. doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, we've seen it. We know what's going on. You don't want that in your brain all the time. But for the new guys, yeah, you should understand, like, that shit happens, dude. I've seen 30-plus arm breaks in person at tournaments. Like, it happens a lot. But it's super easy to not break your arm, guys. Really easy to break your arm, really easy to not break your arm. Just follow some simple rules, man. Keep that elbow in, pull backwards, keep your face connected to your hand, stuff like that. It will make it so you just don't break your arm. But you guys got to be aware of it because it sucks when you get some people that are super competitive and they go up there and they just snap their shit. (laughs) So watch that video at your own risk if you want to watch arm break. I'm not big fans of arm break videos, but I get it. And then moving forward for the last thing, posted by 
uh, HD Buildo uh, find an event in your area. We compile tournaments from uh, multiple sources to give you the most complete U.S. calendar available. If you don't see your event listed, let us know and we will be sure to add it. Uh, and then he, it's a link to Armfighter. Dude, Armfighter.com, you guys are getting it, man. You guys are taking some great ideas, really um, unifying a lot of things, like bringing it all to one website, which is awesome. Um, helping find a team, like I said, I, I stickied it to the top of the um, of the page. I'll check out this tournament thing you got going on. I might sticky that up to the top as well, um, if I think it's like legit and it's working out. Uh, we got to get people posting on that. I mean, because don't get me wrong, the idea of one website or one place where everybody goes there and has all the arm wrestling teams listed, it has all the tournaments on there. That's great, man. That's that's fantastic. Because sometimes things do uh, things do get lost in Facebook and you won't hear about a tournament you could have went to or something like that. So it would be nice to have one website like we used to have. Uh, they used to have there used to be a website called the northeastboard dot com, and it was basically an arm wrestling forum. And John Brzezink and everybody was on there. And all the tournaments were posted. And that was like the main collection of arm wrestlers were all on that website. And then, um, I don't know, I mean, a lot of people attribute different reasons why the Northeast board went down. Uh, some people say it was because Mac Tell uh, started trolling and he made John Brzink leave and then Ingen Terzi and all them left. And then since they left and everybody else just kind of slowly just left that website. So now all of arm wrestlers are on Facebook. But yeah, I mean, a website like arm uh, armfighter.com, I mean, could could bring everybody back to one website to get all their information for arm wrestling, which would be awesome, right? I would have no problem at all telling people to go check out that site if they want to um, find what they're looking for for arm wrestling tournaments and training posts and stuff like that. So uh, I'll definitely check that out when I get a chance here, um, HD Buildo. And, um, yeah, maybe I'll sticky that to the top as well so people can find tournaments and they can find teams. I mean, that's big, right? That's what we get here on the Reddit um it, is like basically all new people, so making it easier for them is a high priority. Um, so that's it, guys. That's it for this week. 42 minutes, not too bad, right? Not over an hour like we do sometimes. Um, appreciate you guys listening. Um, try if you guys can give me a oh man, I, I feel so like it's such a sellout. Hey, can you subscribe to my channel? Um, <laughs> uh, try to get this out there, this podcast, a little bit. I my buddy that was uploading it um, to SoundCloud, his computer went down, and so I've just been posting it on on YouTube, and I'm still sending him the uh, the podcast. But he texted me today saying that he got his computer fixed, and so now he's gonna start uploading them again. So hopefully this one will be on SoundCloud. Um, I like giving you guys different ways to listen to this. Um, I was actually gonna try to look into iTunes and how Neil gets that up there, so maybe I could share this on there as well. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, leave me a comment somewhere or something like that on the, on the video, on the uh, YouTube video or something like that. Um, a few people have shared their opinions on the podcast and like how I'm doing it and what they think I should change. But I'd like to remind them. <laughs> I'd like to remind them that I'm when it comes to this type of stuff, I am like I'm working on it. Right. But I'm not the most driven person when it comes to editing and uploading and stuff. And I'm. I'm building it up, but that's kind of one thing that happened with the vlog was like, I mean, if I'm being honest with myself and with you guys, it was just like the vlog took a lot. I was doing a weekly vlog, but at the end of the week, it was like the editing would be about, you know, six, seven hours of editing um, a week on a generally, of course, wait till the last day and spend an entire day just trying to edit and get a vlog up and then looking for music and all this stuff. And it just took too much time. And so the podcast, this podcast is really easy for me, and I'm trying to keep it that way, right, I just know myself, you know, and just uh, recording, talking for about an hour, then uploading it with, like, no video, no edits, really, to speak of, and just putting it up there for you guys is, is easy, so it's sustainable, because it's easy, it's sustainable, um, and uh, so people keep telling me stuff like, Derek, you should chop up <laughs> the entire, the entire podcast into uh, segments, and you know list what your each topic is and stuff and break it all down i get it that'd be cool that would also take me uh like a bunch of time <laughs> so i probably won't do that um so i mean yeah unless someone has some ideas or something that's not going to make this take way more time uh then i don't know i don't see anything wrong with the way i'm doing it now i i know a lot of people though don't want to have a youtube video open the whole time they're trying to listen to something so trying to get it up on websites so you guys can uh just listen to it and do what you're going to do like 
go do your workout or go uh, drive wherever you're driving something and not have to have YouTube open. That's the goal. So I'm trying to find, you know, websites and stuff so you guys can just listen um, to make it easier for y'all. So anyway, hope you guys are enjoying this. That's all I got. You guys go train hard. Gains are gains are coming, guys, for everybody. Everybody, you guys, stay focused. WL season's right around the corner. Things are blowing up. Uh, people are getting getting their names out there. And uh, oh, shout out to Paul Passmore. Recently broke his arm this past weekend. Uh, hopefully he'll heal quickly, brother. Hate hearing about that. Um, Paul's super up and comer. Like dude's just like one one spot away from being on WAL, and he ended up breaking his right arm against Robbie Burnett in a tournament. Uh, so that sucks to hear. Uh, yeah. Thoughts go out to you there, Paul. Heal up, brother. All right, guys. Well, you guys take it easy, and I'll see you next week.